What happens when a visit to the temple doesn't live up to expectations or when we find out we can become a god? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm so pleased to have you join us, and I hope you're learning something. We we try to share the uh, message of the good news, and uh, I think this guest today is shows such courage. And Amy Sanford, I'm happy that you're coming, willing to come and share your story. And yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for coming up. Absolutely. From the Provo area, yes, huh? Yes, that's what, yeah. <laughs> Well, as we often do, uh, usually do, where, where were you born and what's kind of your background story? Yeah, so I was born in Logan. Um, my parents were going to Utah State at the time and born into the covenant. My parents were married in the temple. Very active in the I have, yeah, yeah, very active. I mean, I come from pioneers. I, do you? Yeah, and so oh, yeah. it's very deep in my family. Basically, everyone <laughs> is Mormon. and Brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have three sisters. And yeah, I'm the second oldest, and yeah, just growing up, we were all really active. Um, we didn't necessarily have a choice, but <laughs> I didn't, I mean, I didn't really see that as a bad thing at the time. I was just like, oh, that's just what we do. Yeah. We have to go to church. We can't just say we're going to stay home. We can't, <laughs> right. you know. It's just what the family does. It's just what and, we did, and yeah. it was fine, and I went along with it, and I was super Mormon, and I I was a rule follower. I did everything mm -hmm. that I was supposed to do. Were and the oldest, the youngest? Where do you fit so in? So I'm, I'm the second oldest. Second oldest. Yeah, okay. and so, yeah, I did. So you go to primary and get baptized mm -hmm. at age eight? I did, yeah. Dad, dad baptized. All that, yeah, yeah he so. did. And um, I got my Young Womanhood Recognition Award when I was 14. But that's I think right. that's because I was, I was so competitive. Like, I, I don't think I ever really, like, thought I should get it because... I needed to, I just wanted to like get it at an earlier age than my sister got it because she was like 16 when she got it and I was like, well, I'm going to get it when I'm 14. Huh? Yeah. Same with scripture mastery and seminary. I knew all those, but probably because I wanted right? to win the games in mm -hmm. we, that we played. And yeah, so I mean, I, yeah, I went to seminary. I liked it okay. I mean, it was fine. Um, I was glad that I didn't have to wake up early to go or else that would have been a different story. Oh, take release time. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So I graduated from seminary yeah. and... Did it all, so. I know that it's still pretty young in your life, and you're not that old yet, but uh, was there anything that ever came up at seminary or anywhere that you kind of thought, hmm, that's, that's different, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, growing up, so I remember one specific conversation I had with my mom. I was probably only about 10 or so at the time, and we were just talking, and she, she brought up the fact that we could become gods, you know, as we... If we do everything, have you ever thought about that before? No, I don't. I didn't think I had, and um, yeah, if we did everything we were supposed to, then we could get to the highest degree of the celestial kingdom, right. be a god, have our own world. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, so does that mean God went through the same process? Like he's just further along in the process. He used to be just a man, but he worked his way up to a god. And Jesus only died for our world, but there's other worlds that maybe other saviors died for. And my mom's like, I mean, my mom said, like, yeah, but as far as we're concerned, that he's the only Jesus. We only have one God. Well, God the Father. Yeah. And there's only one Jesus for us. And but yeah, that just never really sat right with me. But at the same time, I was just so in the Mormon culture, and I was right. just like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird, but eh, you know. And it is kind of a confusing, yeah. well, a confusing, it's it's so different of a concept that we can become a god, or that that God was once a man mm -hmm. living on a planet, a sinful man, yeah, yeah. and it just he's just progressed and, further. And, right, and, and it, it just doesn't go along with what you read in the Bible, and even the Book of Mormon, you know, that there's one God, and there's always been one God, he's the same yesterday today and tomorrow, and that just doesn't go along with. Yeah, so that, that struck you as a little yeah, strange. Yeah, it did. And then, I mean, obviously, polygamy was always a hard thing to to kind of grasp. And, yeah. but, and with all the, the topics that were kind of hard to understand, there's, you know, justifications for everything. And Yeah, they... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just always a way to justify it. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, that's, 
that's how it is. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll understand and in the so, millennium. Yeah. That's yeah. what I so, always said. Yeah. I kind of just went along with it. I kind of just went through the motions, and that was how I was. I mean, on the outside looking in, I'm sure I looked like, you know, a perfect Mormon and yeah. coming from a perfect Mormon family. But I, my heart was never really fully in it. Do you think there's... I've actually read something recently that said that some people, that they feel like there's a, a number of Mormons who have kind of left the doctrine and the concepts of some of the, some of the doctrine and philosophies, but they can't leave the church because of the culture and their mm -hmm. family and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Do you think that's true? I do. I mean, I, I'm kind of the same way. I, for me, it took a lot of courage over a lot of years to finally take the steps that I've taken. Yeah. Um, for a while, I was just kind of pretending, kind of just faking, so everyone would think everything was okay. And we we, you know, we can was, do that pretty well, can't we? Yeah. Show and, a good face. And, and I was even told that I should just fake it because that's really? just the culture. Like that's my family, and that's where I came from, and it's the one true church. So you know, I should just pretend and. Fake it Go until you until you get it right yeah. or something. And that was so after high school, you I mean, you go to seminary. You mentioned and yeah. then and what happens I went after to BYU school? and oh, loved it. Yeah, graduated BYU. I did. Yeah, oh. um, I loved it yeah. at the time. You know, it was kind of the same. Like like I said, my heart was never totally in the church, but it was enough. And with the culture aspect and everything, like all my friends were Mormon. There's no, no question that you were. Yeah, a was good just, Mormon girl. Yeah, that's just what. And religion classes that you take at the, mm -hmm. uh, how was that, how were those? Um, they were fine. I mean, I remember them being difficult. Like I had, so I, I took all the religion classes. I took you know Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, um, and then I took a mission prep class actually, and I did take the New Testament class. Mm. And the only one that really stands out to me was a New Testament class. I you know I was really impressed with. My teacher seemed to know the New Testament like word for word from yeah. cover to cover, and I thought that was really cool. And I learned more about Jesus in that class, um, and just kind of more about yeah the atonement and all that. Um, but now, kind of looking back at it, it's crazy to me how my teacher I felt like he knew so much about the New Testament, but how he would still be you know an actual cherry more, pick the scriptures yeah or something. because now that i've been reading the new testament there are so many scriptures that i've come across and i'm just that don't yeah. go along with yeah. mormon doctrine and it's just but again like there's a justification that it's true as far as it is translated correctly That's right. and there's all that and so but i mean now that i've learned more about the bible and its history and yeah. you know that it's authenticated many many times yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean it's Definitely trustworthy. So, well, we, you know, we we as LDS we have the lessons that we in Sunday school, the, the Book of Mormon one year, and then the Old Testament one year, and the New Testament. But I always thought it was interesting how little time we spent in Paul and mm -hmm. Paul's letters. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering in the in the uh, New Testament Institute class, did they talk much about Paul and his letters, or was it more I, about the life of Jesus? And um, yeah, I think I really don't remember anything about learning about Paul and the letters. Um, I mostly remember, I mean, it was like fall semester going into Christmas, so I kind of remember, um, yeah, just mostly learning about Jesus and then birth story. Going through the and, Gospels and yeah, stuff. Yeah, just standard Mormon New Testament. I just think there's so many things that are that Paul writes about that really aren't, don't fit in with Mormon doctrine, well, and so even they don't in, really spend even much in time on Matthew, that. Or even about, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane True. and marriage. And that, yeah. those are that's all in Matthew, right? Yeah, right off true. the bat, and I mean in other places too. But yeah. there's yeah, there's they kind of skip over. There's those, a few so. things that I, that you read, and it's just like wow, that yeah. is not the same. So you had a busy time right about graduation from BYU. Yeah, so Tell us about that. Yeah, so I um, I was graduating um, BYU for, in April of 2012. I got married in March of 2012, so wow. a month right before I graduated. Um, I met. I had met my husband the summer before I was interning in Washington D.C. Mm. and we actually met at the singles ward out there. Oh wow! And so that was kind of funny. We were. He was there working. Where was I, he from? So he's from Springville, Utah, oh, and I'm he from. Was. And I grew up in Orem, so sure. okay. we grew up really close to each other, but didn't meet until yeah. we got across the country. Right. So yeah, we we dated out there, and then came back to Utah around the same time, and kept dating, and then ended up yeah getting married in March. And when did you get married? 
We got married in Mount Tibinogos Temple. Okay. And so I remember, yeah, leading up to going through the temple, it was really frustrating to me just because no one would tell me like exactly yeah. what happens because you know they're not really supposed to. But right. and it was just really frustrating because you know getting the temple clothes and everything and. I couldn't even know what this was or what I was going to be doing with this, you know, like I just had to get there and figure it out. And so I remember going through the temple the first time and I was like shocked and scared and ter like, it was scared. It scared me. And Had you ever done baptisms for the dead? I did. And I kind of like, I don't necessarily remember thinking that was like super weird or anything just because that's just how, that's just, how, that's just what it was. That's I don't know. That's, whole class That's or something what I was all always doing. learned about and yeah. that it was a necessary thing to do and yeah. I was like oh yeah that's that's fine but yeah um, going through the endowment ceremony and um, everything leading up to that it was very different for me and did did you sense uh, anything about Jesus in the in the temple ceremony the um, ceremony no like I actually felt really bad like I hate I hated how I felt in the temple and I didn't think that you know if this is what I need to be doing I don't think I would feel this way and I think that it would be more about Jesus or that Jesus would mention the temple in the New Testament or like you know the endowment and things we need to do to be saved if, the, if those are things that we need to do in order to right. get the highest degree of the celestial kingdom you'd think that they would have been mentioned at least once and so, but I mean, I was, so yeah, in the ceremony and I just thought it was like so crazy. And I look, I had so many family members that came with me and my I'm sure fiance was there and, and I looked around and everyone just thought it was fine. Like they all looked normal and all looked <laughs> like it was I wonder how many and, really have those feelings, yeah. at least the first few times. I know. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot, but. Yeah, I was looking around and but nobody says anything. Yeah, about and they and I and I had remembered that um, my friends that had gone through the temple before they had talked about how amazing it was and they couldn't wait till I would go through because it's so great and then we can talk about it or we can go together and after I went I was like and they're like oh wasn't it great and I was like yeah like <laughs> I didn't I didn't I, I didn't want to say no I hated I know, it because feel, it's so I yeah feel compelled to to agree uh huh and know. especially because. All my family and everyone I loved for generations had gone and they always talked great things about it as well. And I was like, well, maybe it's me, I guess. I, I mean, I guess I need to figure it out and yeah. get over it because this is <laughs> what I need to do. And yeah, so, so yeah, I kind of just. Now, had your husband been on it. a mission? Did he, he did. Yeah, he went to Guatemala. So he'd been through uh -huh. the temple before. Yep, he had. And Did you ever talk um, to him about how you felt? or? Yeah, so. Um, after we got married and we went to the temple like a handful of times, like not too, not too much, but, um, and every time I felt terrible, I hated being there and I would, I would bring up to him how I didn't like it and, and he was really understanding and, you know, he helped me try to feel better about it and kind of talk he, to me about that. He's been supportive all the way through, Yeah, hasn't he's he? been amazing. My husband's oh. been great. Oh, um, great. he's still an active Mormon, yeah, okay. but he's been really supportive of me. Okay. Um, so yeah, I talked to him about it and you know, I talked to him about like all the doubts and so when I went to the temple, that's kind of, that was kind of the turning point for me. Um, how I said, like I had never been like totally into the church, but I just kind of went through the motions. And then when I went through the temple, I was like, okay, like this, there's gotta <laughs> be something about this. So I kind of, that's when I started kind of um, researching more of the history of the church and Joseph Smith and, you know, seeing... And how, did, how did you do that? What did you go um, to? I think I just kind of Googled searched, it, yeah, or? just Google. And I, always, I kind of felt bad because I, I learned, you know, growing up, you're not supposed to read anything that makes you feel negative feelings about the church right. even if even if it's well documented historical <laughs> fact you know yeah. even if it's true Don't, you right. shouldn't you shouldn't read it if it makes you feel bad about the church and, right. and so when how did I, you overcome that little feeling i don't know i just I just was like well think, I, I just knew it was it wasn't just something that someone made up because they hate the church it was actual facts historical facts that i was reading and i was like okay well i think 
I think that's why I can trust this. And one of the first things that stood out to me was I had no idea, even growing up in the church, that there were different versions of the first vi first vision. Oh, and yeah. that was, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I had no idea. And, mm -hmm. I, and I was kind of hurt that I had never been taught that, you know, in 20 plus years in the church. And and I it just blew my mind that it changed so much over And it was different. Version. Each yeah. one was different, right? And big differences. Yeah. One person versus two. And, right. And I mean, the, the the version that's used now was like 10 years after it happened, supposedly. Oh yeah, supposedly, probably so. great price. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so that was a big deal for me. Um, just, yeah, just different things about polygamy and all that. But I mean, I, I would talk to people about it and again, there was... Who did you talk to, for example? Well, I had a Maybe. few conversations with my mom about it. Yeah. Um, and, and my mom's been great too about it, but she, it's hard for her because, you know, I'm going off on something sure. that's not, yeah. you know, what she had hoped for right. her family. And, <laughs> right. um, so she, I mean, there was justifications for oh, sure. a lot of things that I found, you know, like, um, women couldn't cross the plains by themselves. They needed to be oh, married yeah. no matter if they're like the first or the 10th oh. wife, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Well, that's apparently <laughs> what, I don't know. And so... Things like that, and kind of help the polygamy aspect. And then, of things, yeah, so. and then other thing like the first vision, it was kind of just like brushed off a little bit. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it, I kind of just kept to myself. I didn't want to stir the pot too much. I didn't want to rock the boat. So you're learning you know? kind of what we call the bad news, kind of those kinds of things. How did you mm -hmm. feel about Jesus as a Mormon? Um, so that was. The, the one thing that I could hold on to for some reason. I know growing up reading the Book of Mormon, my favorite part was always Third Nephi when he came to visit the Nephites. Okay. Because that was the one part that actually had Jesus. Right. And I don't know why I didn't read the New Testament more, but that was Well, always, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> we carry it to church. Yeah. We just don't ever read it. Yeah. So that was always my favorite part, just about, about Jesus. And I just always knew that he was my Savior and that he died for me and I, I never doubted that for some reason. And it was, wow. yeah. And so with all the doubts I had about, about the church, I knew that I, you know, I wanted to hold on to, hold on to, Jesus. to Jesus and I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I knew I didn't want to, cause I feel like a lot of Mormons that leave just kind of become either atheist or kind of just do nothing. Yeah. And I didn't want to be like that. Cause I knew I had a testimony of Jesus. You really and, were aware that some people leave God and Jesus when they leave the church. You were yeah, I, I had just, I felt like See, everyone... I didn't, I didn't know that yeah. particular little thing when I came out. It didn't take long to find out. Yeah, find that I just, out. Yeah, I just I felt just like I just figured that's... we all hung on to Jesus, but, yeah. but that's not true, is it? No, I, yeah, I, I don't know why I, I But you did. That. Yeah. Good for you. And so... Now, you were mentioning the Garden of Gethsemane and mm -hmm. the cross and, uh, I mean, the, the sacrifice on the cross. And mm -hmm. did that strike you too? And Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, as Mormons, you yeah. kind of learn that the Garden of Gethsemane is where, where he did the, the atonement. most, yeah, the atonement mostly take place and the yeah. cross is kind of secondary. I mean, obviously a big part of it, but the Garden of Gethsemane is where he suffered yeah. for all of our sins. And then I was reading in Matthew and Garden of Gethsemane part is... <laughs> really short and didn't talk about any of the stuff that I had learned as yeah. a Mormon. And, I, and again, Paul never talks about the yeah. Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> and I read it again and I was cross. like, is that it? Like, I was, <laughs> like, that's it about the Garden of Gethsemane? And I don't know why, like, I never, never knew that. And then, that's funny. And so I, I just read more about, about that and what Christians feel about the cross versus garden and yeah. the gardens really. Well, so what did you, you have, you're in this dilemma and I can tell it takes a process, it's a process for very, you. Very, very long process. Did you, did you just kind of quit going to church? Um, did you so, decide to go to So after I, um, after I got married and it was kind of like, um, like two and a half years where I was kind of just faking it slash kind of going to church for the appearances. And, and you were doing I, callings too. Right? I was. You know, primary I, teacher. Yeah, I was primary teacher. And then, um, so after my son was born in 2014, um, we moved to Louisiana um, for my husband to go to school. And it was a really small ward there. They were great. But so I was called to young women's president there. Oh, and wow. I 
was terrified. And I knew, like, you know, this whole time I was, I felt like such a hypocrite too because I, I knew that this wasn't the church, you know, this wasn't the one true church, yet I was supposed to get up there and act like it was for all these young women. It's and hard, isn't it? And it was very hard. And luck, luckily, we, we actually, um, we didn't plan this at all, but the apartment we had on hold opened up like a couple, like a month after I got called as president. So then we were in a different ward. And so luckily I was only the only president for about a month. Oh. <laughs> and so I think in that time I was able to just, you know, stick to the Bible and do all that. And then, and in the meantime, cause we moved around a, a bunch and every single ward I went to, I poured my heart out to my Bishop and tried to communicate my doubts and all that and I try, I just wanted so bad for the church to be true because oh, it would wow. would have been so much easier. Yeah. It would have been it so is. much easier for every aspect of my life if the church was true. And I I wanted it so bad. And I I tried so hard. I I talked to the bishop every time. I you what know What did and, they counsel to they kind of pray just, more, read yeah, the Book of Mormon? Yeah. Just you know, do do better uh, and act like it's true. Yeah, just do better. Then you end up in Disneyland, Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> Tell so, us about that. Well, okay, so in Louisiana is when, that's when it had been about two and a half years since I'd been to the temple, and all along, like my garments, I always felt like they were suffocating me, and I just hate like the thought every day. I just constantly was thinking about how much I hated them, oh. and I always thought I was like. God can't possibly care what underwear I'm wearing. <laughs> like he can't possibly care. When you and really so, think about I it. I <laughs> know. And so for, you know, for a long time I wore them anyway. And then finally, I don't even know what the breaking point was, but finally one day my husband was at school and I was just like, I'm not going to wear these anymore. And so the whole day, like waiting for him to come back, I was like really scared oh to tell him. But I told him and he was supportive again. Like he, he yeah, he thought it you know, he wanted me to do what I I'm thought was best. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> And so I, I stopped wearing garments and then I was still kind of going to church and, and I tried to pretend like everything was okay. And I tried to pretend like I was wearing garment, you know, like I can't, like, looking back, I can't believe I did that or thought I could do that and just, just fake everything. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up moving to Florida, um, about a year later, um, I was working at Disney World. So, um, and this was kind of another turning point for me. Yeah. Um, so I, what I was doing is I was leading the safaris at Animal Kingdom. And then, but I was, so I was pregnant with our second. And when that happened, I kind of had to get a temporary reassignment because I couldn't really do that while I was pregnant. And so what happened is one day, like it was kind of a different job every day, just random stuff, yeah. like at different parks and resorts. And so one of the days I was um, gonna go along with this one guy and check all the fire extinguishers in the Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh. Like we knocked on all the door, like it was so random. But so we were doing that and he just, we just started talking cause he, I think he had, like I was from Utah and he asked if I was Mormon and I, if that, I mean, I said yes, but I was like, yes, but I've, you know, been questioning a lot. So, hmm. so I kind of said that and he would ask a lot of questions about um, Mormon doctrine and about prophets and you know he asked I remember he asked if so if the prophet were to say something that contradicts with the Bible like which would you believe and I was like oh well, I guess that means they would believe the prophet because sure. that's that's what we do yeah. yeah and I was like well, okay like I guess that's what it is but again that was like whoa that's <laughs> so we'd go Never against of that yeah like <laughs> God's actual word in the Bible for you know modern day revelation right. that and so questions like that, that I either couldn't really answer or I gave the answer and I felt like it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And, Made and then, you think though. Huh? Yeah, it definitely did. And he, he was a Christian um, and he would just talk to me about, and I was kind of asking him questions too. And growing up, I had always learned, you know, I'd always been taught that born again Christians or evangelical Christians they think they're saved and they don't have to do anything and they can just That's do whatever they want. Misconception, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know, but he kind of explained to me, you know, what it really means to be saved. It's that, you know, you're saved and you do good works because you're saved. You don't do good works to earn salvation. Right. And had you ever thought or heard of that concept I, before? I hadn't really. Like, I didn't know how to explain. I didn't explain. understand grace no. and works. And, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I always just 
you know, growing up, you do you do these works, yeah. hoping to earn salvation, hoping to Work be a God, up. hoping yeah. to get away from God, you know, to be your own, have your own world. And so, you know, talking about grace with him was really eye-opening. And he even told me, he was like, he gave me a couple books. He gave me the book by Lee Strobel and um, I can't remember the name of it, but... Case for... Cold case, case for Christ. Case, case for, for Christ, Christ. Yeah. yeah. That, um, and he just talked to me about, you know, what, what it, what the process is like to be saved, like what you, what you would even say to God, like how <laughs> you would pray, like if you want to be saved, this is what, he's, he told me like, this is what he did. Turn your life to this Christ. This is what he, yeah, yeah he yeah. told me what he did and he kind of just, yeah, told me all that and I was, it was a really eye-opening experience and so at that point, I was kind of still going to Mormon church. Right. Um, but a couple months after that, we moved back to Utah, actually. And then, and I still went occasionally to church just because I, you know, wanted to go with my husband and yeah. kind of be supported that way. And, but I was like, I need to try something else. I need, this is, and I kind of always hated, I hated going to church. Like, I felt like it was such a burden and like, I hate it. I just had the bad attitude and I wasn't a good person to be around when I was at and, church. And don't you feel guilty because of that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, yeah, I felt guilty that I, that I hated it. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I like need, I need to find something else. I need to find somewhere. I mean, I wasn't, I don't know. I didn't know if I needed to find a different church or what I even needed yeah. to do. I had no idea. Cause I was, you know, the only one in my family that was, <laughs> you know, had ever really gone to Question another church. church. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, I actually, um, was just driving. Well, we lived in Orem and so I saw center point church and I, it's just off the freeway. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I remember seeing it and I was like, well, I'll just go try it. Why not? And this was and your so first time. It was, yeah, my first, church. Yep. what'd you think? I, I thought it was definitely different. The worship music. And it was funny cause I was like, oh, if I was still like a, active Mormon, I would totally think they were so inappropriate and irreverent for singing like this and for doing all this stuff. But then I was like, since, but since I'm kind of like getting towards like the outside looking in, I'm like, they're worshiping. Like I've never seen, like, it's so amazing. They really want to be here. It's so amazing <laughs> how, how close they feel to Christ yeah. and how you can see it in their eyes when they're singing that they just love Jesus. And it was such an amazing thing. And and then I, and I love how they, all they talk about is Jesus. That's all they talk about. Yeah. And then I still went occasionally to Mormon church and then they talk about using the internet for family history and just random <laughs> stuff like that. And just comparing the two, like, I know it's not always that drastic, but it was just like, I know, oh, it, it's strange, prophets and, and tithing. And, and I noticed they mentioned Jesus, like in the prayers, at the end of the prayers and maybe a couple times during the meeting, but. It really wasn't the Not focal much point. Not focus. No. Yeah. And so, but so at that point, I kind of, I went to center point occasionally, like it was still so new to me and I was still trying to get the courage You're to like processing. totally be, yeah, to be yeah. away. And like I said, it was a long process. Like from the time I went to center point for the first time um, to the time I like started questioning, it was about let's see, like five years. Wow. It, yeah, it was a long process and I wish it wasn't so long, but I, it was hard to, to get up, muster up the courage to do what I knew was right and to be different from everyone. And so and it I does take courage. I'm, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> I know it's tough and it's tough on family, isn't yeah. it? I guess mm -hmm. your sisters and mom. Yeah. And... Yeah. My, so, um, I was really, so again, I was going to center point, but I still didn't, I mean, obviously my husband knew, but I didn't tell anyone else just because oh. I, again, don't want to stir the pot and <laughs> don't want to make a big deal out of it, out of yeah. it. But so finally my parents found out and, um, my mom just, she was really hurt and just kind of just really sad that she thought I was, you know, putting my eternal happiness in yeah. jeopardy. And, and don't you feel funny because you, you you feel closer now to Jesus probably than mm -hmm. you ever have. Oh, definitely. You're trusting yeah. the Bible, and yet I have. Yeah, they don't I have, understand that. I have the best relationship I've ever had with Jesus, and it's amazing. I never. I mean, I guess I thought I had a relationship, but 
No. It's nothing. nothing. No, it's compared. nothing compared. Uh huh. And I've even I even said that 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 um, you know I feel so close to Jesus and it's been amazing. And it's I was still told that I should still just kind of give the the Mormon Church another chance because it's yeah. it's what my family does. It's the culture. It's the one true church, and I mm, still need to try it. And <laughs> and I was like, I've. I've done that. I faked it for five years, and it's yeah. gotten me nowhere. And I, and I'm just done. Like I'm, I'm done pretending. And I want to, you know, be all in for Christ and tell everyone that Jesus is my Savior and that He is enough, and that's all I need. Mm -hmm. I don't need to earn my way to to Him. That He's given it freely, and I, as if I accept Him as my Savior, which I've done, that that's all it takes. And mm -hmm. I actually got baptized just a couple weeks ago. Did you? And, Congratulations. And again, that was, even even though I've, I've stopped going to Mormon church for probably six months is probably the last time I went. Yeah. And even even then, like it's, it was still really hard to get out of the curse to tell my family that I was getting baptized. And with every new thing I tell them, it's still like a, I mean, they're, my sisters were really supportive. I mean, they don't agree with me, but... Yeah. They're supportive. Again, my mom was. My, I mean, my whole family came to my, my baptism. That's fantastic. And, but I mean, they were, they were crying and they were sad. I don't think it was a happy cry. No. And, um, but. But isn't it isn't it neat to be able to do that as an adult to really be accepting Christ? I mean, we baptize these eight year olds. They don't mm -hmm. know that what they're being baptized for. They're just becoming a member of the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're I wasn't. Baptized yeah, and I, Jesus. I love that I wasn't, I wasn't being baptized as a member of Center Point Church. Or no. I was baptized as a follower of Christ. And exactly. And it was amazing. And when I was waiting for my turn, there was a, quite a few people getting baptized before me. And I just, I couldn't stop crying. I was just so happy. And when I got up there, I was losing it too. And it was, I just felt Jesus so closely. And yeah. I just... Uh, I just love the relationship I have with him that I had wow. never found before. And well, I'm so proud of you again, uh, just to have the courage and and really against all odds. And I know that it, there's a price to pay sometimes for this courage. And but to, knowing what we know now about Jesus and the Bible and grace and His righteousness, it's it's mm -hmm. certainly worth it. Well, I guess we should wrap up, but do you have anything you want to say to your family? You kind of said it a little bit there, but yeah. anything last minute to I your mean, I just love them. I, I'm, I, don't, I want them to know that I'm not doing this to hurt them. I don't think mm. I'm jeopardizing eternal family. You know, I, I, this is the best thing that anyone can do is to have this relationship with Christ. And I'm just so happy that I found it, and it took me a long time to finally yeah. be all in, but I couldn't be happier, and yeah. I know that this is And the there's right a thing definite difference, isn't there? Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, growing up, I always thought that LDS were Christian because they, you know, they always said so, and, I mean, they are in a way, but it's so different. It's not it's, the same it's, Jesus. It's not the same, and yeah. I know I've offended some people by saying it's not the same Jesus, but then, you know, you explain why, like, yeah. Jesus is an infinite being. But there's so many of us that have gone through this process, and we know now the difference. Mm -hmm. and so, well, Amy, yeah. thank you so much for coming up and sharing your story, and thank you're a delightful you. young lady, and appreciate it. We'll see you next time on The Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>